shout out to Charlotte, Yurikim, Saliger, and Amola Gabber for their work on the following chapter. Earth, 784, Universe 16. Around the same time in our universe when Goku leaves to train Oob. But here, of course, no such event would take place. On her own personal mission, young Brawl soars through the sky. But where could she be going? Touching down in Satan City, she enthusiastically runs to a house nearby. Opening the door, it's Gohan, who playfully asks who's there, before joyfully looking down to see Bra. Cutting right through the cordial nonsense, she knows he could sense her approaching because she was not hiding her energy. Furthermore, she wants to know why he just called her Bra. A miss? He answers, because that's your name? In a huff, the youngster resentfully lectures that she is his sister and wants to be called Sun Bra. She is also part of the family. Her brother reminds names don't define who someone is. Besides, Bulma really doesn't like it. Pouting, Gohan realizes Bra has not come to play with Pan. The two having a friendly spar in the sky. The more experienced fighter comments how strong his little opponent is, causing her to bulk. Those words is not something she hears often, apparently. But her brother swears she really is. This prompts her to question why it is she can't beat him then. Why can't she turn into a Super Saiyan? Why are he and their father so invincible? Trying to make this a life lesson, Gohan reprimands she's only six. At that age, none of them even came close to the power she possesses. Heck, Goten and Trunks were a special case of their own, and even they don't graze her strength. However, the stubborn young child refuses to wait, despising the feeling of being powerless. She's found a way of her own to break through. Letting her emotions overcome her, she sobs he always wins. She's so weak. Transforming. She tells her elder she wants to go another round. Bro, no! Never shoots! Towards the ground! In a fight, there are no rules. The pretty much omnipresent Vegito, though off-world, senses full well what's going on with his daughter, but rest assured Gohan will be able to take care of it. His friend here on the ground grumbles. Is there a problem, Mr. Policeman? It seems our fused warrior enjoys venturing through space, getting into the occasional shenanigans. The half Saiyan warning if she doesn't calm down right now, he's going to stop her by force. This has gone far past what is safe for everyone nearby. But blinded by her own emotions and immaturity, the fact Gohan was not even using his full force before makes her ever the more furious. Ah! Ah! Easily, albeit not without rattling his nerves, he is able to put an end to Brawl's tantrum, rushing her to the lookout. Dende heals her. Luckily, her injuries were bad, but nothing life-threatening. Glancing around, she asks what happened and how they got here. Her father chiming in off screen. Disappointed in her ability to maintain awareness and clarity, he tells her she has a self-control problem that needs to be taken care of. Ushering her to the room of spirit and time, Vegito instructs her to transform into a Super Saiyan. However, she can't do it on command, explaining she needs to be angry. Immediately pinpointing the issue, strong emotions work great to initially awaken the form, but after unlocking it for the first time, she needs to be in control. If she fails to master this, she's just as much of a danger to herself and everyone around her as their enemies are. Exclusively for this exercise though, she can get as angry as she needs to be. As in here, there are no innocent bystanders to get in the way. Pondering on what he can do to make her mad. Outside, knowing the man well, Gohan only hopes their father isn't doing anything foolish in there. Having already been 10 minutes, that means just over two days have passed for them. Getting a sensation of unease, he thinks it'd be a good idea to check in to see how things are going. Swinging the door open, Vegito growls, THE STUPID brat! Obviously, the Vegeta side in the driver's seat. He vents to Gohan that she doesn't listen, she doesn't cooperate, and actively makes everything harder than it needs to be. Goku apparently taking the wheel by giving up and instant transmission in a way, as any fine father would do. As Gohan makes his way into the chamber to see what he can do, the others left wondering where Vegito could have run off to. And by the look on Bulma's face, it seems this type of behavior is just as typical of Vegito as it was of Vegeta.
Kneeling down to comfort his little sister, he informs he'll be the one taking care of her training from here on out, questioning if she's hungry. As relatable as anyone, she sniffs she's always hungry, prompting him to request she turn into a Super Saiyan and follow him. Dejected, she lowers her head muttering she's not in the mood, inferring she's about as down with how the lesson is going as Vegeta was. Knowing how to press her buttons, he smirks, trunks is outside and says she fights like a girl. Mentorial manipulation done right, he then tells her she'll be staying this way all the time from now on, with only the exception of sleeping. This is how he himself prepared to master the form too, cooking a dinner well above the ones he and Goku shared while training for the Cell games. He assures Brawl the anxiousness and intensity lessens with time. Also, for the short term, the two of them will simply live here for a little while. He's brought movies, books, board games, even Pan is going to join him any minute now. Though, as her father's daughter, in more ways than one as she goes to town on a bowl of rice, she merely prefers training. None of that other stuff is all too fun. Compromising, he agrees to train a little too, but only for a limited time per day. While sparring and getting stronger is important, it's not the direct subject of why they've come here. Not much later, Pan walks into the chamber herself, happy to see her friend. By the looks of it, Videl didn't spare any supplies they could possibly need while here. Gazing up above her head, with eyes as wide as the oceans, she asks if she can. Not even having to finish the sentence, Brawl kneels down for her, technically niece, to feel her Super Saiyan hair. Gohan does well to keep the three of them entertained, while his sister, knowingly or not, grew used to her transformation. Who even finds a way to discover interest in activities that aren't fighting. This acting as a way to make Brawl take her conscious mind off her own incredible power and learn how to control it completely. Although, Gohan would have to steal a few lessons from Piccolo. Before too long, their training was finished, the youngster appearing to have a sense of calm and tranquility while maintaining her raw power. Emerging, student become mentor questions the Namek how long they were in there, but since the door is left open, the amount has been the same for each side. Calling many of Earth's heroes to the lookout, it seems the final lesson for Brawl is to make a statement to her friends and family on what she's learned, who reluctantly apologizes for almost destroying the planet, promising not to do it again. Although, with a typical lemon face, at least a sliver of this comes off as genuine regret. Though her father wants to stress test her word, asking if she'll be able to stay calm while transformed, and while fighting the most annoying person of all time. Without skipping a beat, she asks if that's why they brought Trunks here. Close, but it's actually Gotenks, who immediately jumps into character, jaunting it'll be an honor for her to spar with him. Sighing he is annoying, but way too weak for her, which angers the fused fighter, threatening to finish this little baby with only 1% of his power. Struggling more than he thought he would, Bulma has to remind Trunks to go easy on his sister. Eat that, brat! You eat that with the cherry on top! Brawl's anger looking like it's getting the best of her. Gotenk shouts for everyone he'll take care of it, but the ensuing explosion will definitely destroy the lookout, screaming for everyone to get to safety. Vegito ready to jump into action. Gohan places his arm in front of him, urging he not move. When she disappears, Gotenk's not even able to trace where she went. Sneaking up and pantsing him from behind, he can only swing wildly amidst the embarrassment, while a carefree brawl giggles away. Pan pointing to him and questioning what he's doing wearing underwear like that for, who feverishly squabbles he doesn't choose what he wears. Charging a Kamehameha, he vows to reduce the child to ashes. When Vegito wisely chooses to intervene, not lost in the irony of the situation. Appearing dumbfounded, at least that can be said for one of them. Brawl taunts it looks like Gotenks is the one losing his cool here. Making leaps of progress to pass her final test with flying colors. Confidently, Gohan deems their training a resounding success. With her newfound discipline, the Z Fighters have yet another hero in training of unprecedented potential. Meanwhile, in the world of the Kais, peering in on their mortal friends through a crystal ball, Kibito Kai finds great relief in seeing Vegito's little girl getting herself under control, knowing how bad things could have gotten if her impulsiveness went unchecked. Old Kai in agreement, at least for now. But something doesn't sit right with the old timer. 
very curious and concerned how exactly her life will play out.